that's it. It's all there. You know, uh, I, most people that come, as I said, two men died this week, and two children died uh, in our, our home that we have in Tijuana, leukemia. And, and they died bravely, too. Uh, bravely and, and facing death is something that happens to everybody. Why is everybody sad? My nephew said when he was <laughs> just turned six and was dying in City of Hope, why is everybody sad, Aunt Mary? Aren't I going to go to heaven? <laughs> well, yes, you are. But then why is everybody sad? He said, the only thing I wish, he said, I do wish my mother could go with me. <sighs> that's hard. Now, that's hard. Those things are hard to face. It's hard to face a son who's in prison. It's hard to face a daughter in prison. I, every night I go into the women's uh, section, the very last section uh, I, that I go to in the prison, and I see the women coming in, and I think to myself, in all my 83, almost 84 years, I have never had the suffering, uh, all of them put together, the suffering that they've had, it never touched my life. There's not one of them that hasn't suffered a hundred times more than I've suffered. You know, I brought some pictures. And I never know what, because there's so many things you can imagine, so many people to tell you about, so many loved ones. I will tell you a story about a girl that came from this kind of environment. And when I mean this kind, I mean people that probably have a bed to sleep in tonight, probably have a car to drive, probably have another, this isn't the only clothes that are hanging in your wardrobe, and probably have, you know, enough uh, lights in your house, and you probably have water. You probably have things that you think everybody has and a good part of the world doesn't have. And, but they came from, she came from this kind of a wonderful, hardworking, loving Christian family, Catholic family. And uh, they had a home in Minnesota, where, and they had, uh, a 14 or 17 room home in Minnesota and a, and a home on the lake. And her daughter, after the birth of her second child, had postpartum psychosis and brought her little son down to Rosary and killed him. And she was brought into the prison, flaming red hair, natural red hair, and saying, her mind, go on. I, 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 I suppose everybody hates me. Everybody hates me. No, no, she's dead now. I, I still don't, I still can't almost say her name. Although I pray to her every day to pray for the mentally ill. And I asked her, uh, I, I tried to comfort her. And the doctor did too in the prison. He was very good to her, the psychiatrist. And she said, you hate me, don't you? He said, no, I don't hate you. And, uh, and she said, well, God hates me. And no, no, darling, God can't hate. God is, a lo God is love. God doesn't hate you. Well, the doctor told me that danger's going to come when she starts to become sane. She takes her medicine, and she realizes what she did. She doesn't realize it yet. My little boy became a devil. That's why I had to kill him, you see. He, he became a devil. And her father and mother, they didn't know what to do. What kind of a phone call is it to tell, tell a parent that your daughter just <coughs> killed your grandson? And, and the father came out to see them. And he stood outside the door and looked inside the prison. In those days, you could look into the inside. And she was standing up there holding on to the, to the wires like this. And her hair was blowing in the background, the big sign, Penitenciaria de la Stada, over her. And, and, and she was crying out, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know what I was doing. Daddy, I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, God. And he said he was in the battle. He was in the battle with Rommel and the forces of Africa tank war. And he said, I'd rather be going into battle than to see her here. I'd rather be going into battle. <laughs> you know how hard it is, how terribly hard it is on a parent to have such terrible news. But he told her, my darling girl, he said, I didn't give you very much time when you were little. But now I'm retired. And all my time's going to be yours, all of it. Well, he died not long afterwards. I think it was too much for his heart, his daughter being there. And sometimes at night, she'd come to my little Caracas, which was very small. And Noreen knew was there so many times. And, uh, 
she would sit on my bunk and she'd start talking about the little Joe, her little Joey, and tell me about how she killed him. Over and over, she said, Mother, Mother, he looked at me, he was so frightened, and I took a gun. When I took the gun, he looked at me so strangely, like, what are you doing with the gun? I took him for a ride and then I shot him. And then I got scared and I took him back to the house and she was a nurse so she got an IV and put it in hoping he'd live. And then she buried him. Yes. And she said, and then I waited for the police. I sat there waiting and they didn't come. So I went back out. I said, I know what's happened. Christ has risen him from the dead. I'm not going to, I can't find him because he's risen from the dead. Christ has come and risen him. Her mind, you know, I'm sorry. It's been so many years and I still feel she was one of the saddest cases I ever saw because she didn't understand what had happened. And she was so bright. And she sang like you were singing this morning. She sang, didn't she? She sang like an angel. She actually had a voice like an angel. And an RN and, and, and a wonderful family. But it happened to her. And you can say, it couldn't happen to me, nothing like that. You don't know. You don't know what can happen to us before we leave this world. But all of a sudden you're in a world that you never expected to be in. And I pray to God that you're never in that world. But I also ask you, have pity on me. Have pity on me. At least you, friends, have pity on me. The words of Job, have pity on me. Have pity on her. Have pity on all of them that you don't know. And know that they had a... There was a mother that brought them into this earth. And there was a Christ that went to the cross, loving them. Turn to that thief who must have emptied many pockets or killed many people next to him. Will you remember me in paradise? This day you will be with me. This day. This day. That's mercy. That's what the Lord came for. It's mercy. That's what he wants from you is mercy. You know, I think you were singing a cowboy song. I saw a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> And I remember I had a uh, I had a uh, man come in and I used to go to what they call a grito in the morning, and uh, I said to the guards, "Don't hurt him, don't hurt him." He was brought in on a bad charge, and uh, I said, "Don't hurt him." They said, "Mother, I'm going to hurt him." The captain said, "I said you're not God," and he said, "Well, here I am." <laughs> and I said, "Oh, you are." You remind me of a sheriff in Texas. <laughs> well, I, by the way, I have a daughter that lives in Texas, and I go to Texas once a year. have many Texas friends now. But she said, he said, I told him a story. I said, this sheriff, he just sit puffing on his cigar. And he'd say, they come, the, the uh, deputy would come and say, we called this man, he stole a horse. What do you think we ought to do with him? <laughs> he said, well, I don't know. I think it's time I taught the boy a lesson. Hang him! <laughs> and so that's the way he went on. Every crime, everything, the sheriff he went before, I said, we can't, what do you think we ought to do with him? And every time the sheriff answered, I think it's time this boy learned a lesson. Hang him! <laughs> well, one night he died, like we're all going to. And angels came and brought him up to God's throne, and he was shaking. As they read the long, long, and the history of his sins, and they said, Now that's what his sins are, the Lord, good Lord. What do you think we should do with him? I don't think the Lord speaks with the Texas. <laughs> But I don't know how to speak with a Jewish accent. <laughs> but the Lord said to him, Well, I think it's time we taught this boy a lesson. Forgive him. Forgive him. And you know that the captain said to me, Mother, you did a terrible thing to me. I had both hands down. I wasn't expecting it. And you came right up under my jaw and hit me. <laughs> and he said, Mother, nobody's going to hurt. I said, you see, 